Okay, in this video we're going to learn about our second type of um, election process, and that is the instant runoff um, voting method. And sometimes I think the book refers to this as IRV, so instant runoff voting. Um, the idea with instant runoff voting is maybe a little bit more clearly understood if you look at another name that it's also frequently known as, which is plurality with elimination. So what we're going to do here is we start out our exciting program here by essentially doing the plurality method. Remember, plurality is just look at the first choice voters, or first, first choice votes, and what we're going to do is decide who has the most votes. And we're going to look at candidates A, B, and C in this case. Um, notice that we have lots of different um, ballot types, and so make sure you total everything up. Notice candidate A has 9 plus 14, or 23 first place votes. B has 15 and 4 for those next two columns. So B has a total of 19 first place votes. And candidate C has 2 plus 16 for those last two columns and ends up with a total of 18 first place votes. Um, if we were just doing plurality, A would win the election because they have the most first place votes and you'd be done. What we'd like to do here though is what we call an instant runoff. Let's, what we're going to do is we're going to drop the candidate that has the fewest number of votes. Um, in this case, candidate C had the least votes, so candidate C is going to be, now be eliminated from our election. Uh, and then we're going to just do a runoff between A and B. The advantage of doing this, if you remember, um, the prob one of the problems with the plurality method was that idea of a Condorcet candidate, that maybe if the other person was out of the way, somebody else would be more popular. That's kind of what we're trying to do with this instant runoff thing. So if we eliminate candidate C, essentially anyone that voted for candidate C is now going to have to vote for somebody else. Now remember, these ballots record their order of preference. So in this, for these nine people, who cares if candidate C drops out? That was like their least favorite person. But here, if candidate C dropped out, these two people are going to end up voting for A instead. And if candidate C drops out here, these 16 people are going to vote for B instead. Well, for as close of a race as this was up front, those candidate, those votes from C when they get reallocated are going to make a big difference in the actual final value of our election. And arguably, this is a more fair method, right? Because we're taking those second, those second place votes into consideration um, in deciding who the candidate is. So how do we actually do this? Um, essentially what we're going to do is um, we're going to go through and recalculate. If you have trouble doing some, sometimes people can do some of this stuff in their head and essentially you're like, okay, I'm going to move these votes here. So now A wins and I'm going to move these votes here. So now B wins, and you can do some of that in your head. If you're comfortable with just glancing down the columns and giving them to whoever's highest on the list, once that third candidate is eliminated, that's totally cool. Um, the book does go through, and if you're having a little bit of trouble, it's okay to basically go through, and what we're going to do is just redraw this table again. And we're just going to move everybody up. By eliminating candidate C, there's now only two choices. So it's just a matter of where each of those go. So for example, these nine votes are going to go to A first. The next 14 votes go to A and then B. Remember, C's crossed out. The next 15 votes had candidate B in first place. C was in second place, but now that they're gone, now A is going to move up and be in second place. For these next, oh, sorry about that. Were four votes for the next one. B was above A. Those were our first and second place votes. But these two, once candidate C, who was the winner, are gone, they're going to go to A and then B. And then at the end, those last 16 votes are now going to go to candidate B first over A. And now we just add up all the votes for A. So now A had the 9, the 14, and the 2 plus 2. Uh, which is 25 votes, and then candidate B now has the 15, the 4, and then these extra 16 votes from when C dropped out, and that gives us 35. And now in this case, B is the winner using the instant runoff voting method. 
um, which is actually different than what the plurality winner was. Um, so it, it really, the election results can completely change by which method you're using. And that, that really is an interesting and difficult position to kind of be in. So instant runoff, basically just start with, um, a, just look at the first place votes, cross out the candidate with the least number of first place votes, and then move everybody up in the candidates, candidacy. Make sure to give what, whoever was voting for C, give those votes away, move them up in the chart, and then you're ready to go. On a couple of problems in your homework, I believe you actually have four candidates instead of three. Um, basically, you keep going through this process until one person wins with a majority. And remember, majority is not the most votes. Majority means specifically more than 50% of the total votes. In this particular problem, if we add up the total number of votes up here at the top, uh, 22, 37, 40, 51, 60. I think there's 60 votes up here at the top. Um, but whatever whatever these totals are up here, um, if there's 60 votes total, then that means that you would need 50 percent. Here, let me write this down. So we have 60 votes total. To have a majority, you'd have to have more than 50 percent of the 60 votes. So 50 percent of the 60 votes is 30, so you need to have more than that. So you'd have to have at least 31 votes. Now that we've done the instant runoff, notice now, candidate B wins with actually a majority of the vote. So more than 50% of the original voters ended up liking B the best after going through the um, instant runoff process. Um, and so that's why we actually like this, because we eliminate that idea of just the most votes, and we bring it back to the idea of a majority winner, which a lot of people are much more comfortable with. If you have four candidates, essentially you're just going to keep going through this process until somebody wins by a majority. Uh, really the easiest way to do it is just keep eliminating one candidate at a time and um, and then when you're done the winner is you're down to two candidates and the winner is just whoever has the most once you're down to two candidates so but you need to you do need to redraw the table each time so you would do you'd have four first place votes eliminate the one with the least number of votes and then read refigure out a, B, and C, or whoever, whatever three candidates are left, figure them out. Go back again, um, and then do a runoff with your new chart. So making the new chart doesn't, sometimes it seems kind of silly for two candidates, but it's really important when you have three candidates, um, and then you would cross off whoever the third, the lowest of the candidates was from this second election, and then do the process one more time. Um, Anyway, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them on the discussion board, and I will be happy to assist you. Thanks.